Taurus has come a long way in the last couple of years with their third generation of stuff like the G3, which took a lot of the old G2 things, upgraded, improved them, and uh, has made it for a really nice gun. Never got our hands on a G3C. I did once have a G2C and I had a lot of troubles with it, but that was years ago. And that's how I know there have been changes and improvements between that generation and this one. Then the GX4 came out, which is probably easily the most comfortable to shoot, at least for me, of the micro compact family. Even more so when you throw one of these comp barrels in there. That's a separate video. We're not going to get into that, but just wanted to have it as an example of the modern Taurus. So when news came out about the G3 XL, my first thought was, cool, I get it. It's a G3 slide slapped onto a G3C frame. I could see some applications for that, but they made a few other changes, and this seems to be yet another evolution of the Taurus line. Tabletop review and field strip of the G3 XL is what's coming up next on GB Guns. Opening up our cardboard box, we've got all of our paperwork, which includes something that I'm glad to see, and that is a lifetime warranty once activated. Uh, I had issues, as I said, with the Taurus years ago. A lot of things have changed. A coupon for a laser and something from AFT. <laughs> Taking a look at our manual. Yes, I do this because it shows how well they want you to know your firearm. The better you know it, the better time you're going to have, probably the happier the user you're going to be. This being so affordable, under $300, I'm assuming it's going to be a good manual. Actually, I'm cheating. I already went through it. Um, and I noticed some things about it. One of them, and I don't know if this is coming from Taurus Brazil or Taurus USA, but in this safe carry condition section, it recommends carrying without a round in the chamber. Now, there is some logic to that and some folks who believe in doing that. When that's coming from the gun manufacturer, however, it sounds like it's not safe to have a round in the chamber. Um, so that's kind of an interesting spot to be in that I haven't seen in other manuals. Um, I trust the, I mean, this gun has a trigger safety and a drop safety. That makes it mechanically safe. Why they make this multi-paragraph section in here about not having around in the chamber is a little, I don't know, dis, disconcerting, uh, disconcerting, if you will. If you're curious about specs, pause here. I'm not going to read this stuff aloud to you. You have internet, you should have looked this up somewhere else, but here it is. One thing that I did notice on here with this comparing the uh, G3 models across the board is the overall length of the G3 and overall length of the G3 XL is different by about a quarter of an inch. When I first heard about this gun, I assumed it was the G3 slide on a G2C or G3C frame. Not quite. More on that later, but that was just an interesting note I had in here. Uh, as far as images to help you understand things, they are nice, clear photos. Not always the techniques that I personally would use, but I'm sure they get the job done. All right, let's get that out of the way and take a look at the gun. You might have noticed as I closed off that last shot, it does come with two magazines. These are 12-round magazines, and the ejection is certainly that. It's not releasing. It is kicking the mags out. I like that. I like to know that it's going to come out when I push the button. Witness windows for full, partway, and empty is your bright yellow follower. I prefer witness windows to either be on the left side, if they're going to be on the side, or just to be on the spine on the back. It makes it a lot easier to check round count. The perk to having them on the right side is if you're loading them with the magazine in your left hand, you can see. But the rest of the time, as far as checking what's in the gun, checking what's in, on your belt, eh, I don't know, it's just a, a minor personal preference. Um, these magazines are made in Brazil, have a nice glossy finish to them, and you notice that the magazine release cut is on both sides. That's because the magazine release is reversible. So, why the G3 XL. What is it that got me excited about it? Well, this size, this 12 rounder, I can get all three fingers on comfortably. I can hold this and I have large hands. That means everyone with my size hand or smaller can get a full grip on a relatively compact short in length gun, but you still have a four inch barrel. Why is that important? Well, most of your defensive ammo out there, the specs that you see on the box and what the 
bullet was designed to do is performance out of a four inch barrel for nine millimeter. When you go shorter than that, you lose velocity, so you run the risk of the round hitting the target too slowly for that full metal or for that hollow point to expand properly. It's not hitting with it hard enough to rip it open. There is specialty ammo out there for smaller barreled guns, but it's just something to keep in mind. If you're carrying something under four inches, your ammunition may not perform as intended. This lets you have that four inch with the compact grip. The compact grip is much easier to conceal. This is the part that sticks out and it's nice and rounded on the Taurus. And you see this angle here, down here is easy to conceal because the shirt's already hanging over that part. Uh, this gives you enough finger longer down on this side than it is on that side. So that's very smartly done. And we've already shown clear. Since I always forget and have to throw it in later on, let's talk about the trigger. Taurus has a second strike capability on most of their guns. Uh, that's sort of like having a DASA, meaning after you've pulled the trigger, you get a click and no bang, you can pull again. Most modern ammunition, that's not necessary, but if you're running something with hard primers, like some NATO ammunition or some old ammunition, ammunition that might have gotten moist or damp or wet or has been in your carry gun for a long time, that is a lot faster than doing a tap rack flip to get the next round in there and kick out a round that potentially could have been good otherwise. So I love that feature. The trigger itself, when armed, we've got a very light, light take up that is lengthy. So it's, you've got to have intent, but it's very light, comes to a wall, very crisp, clean break. And the reset is decent and brings you right back to the wall. There's no more additional second take up or second creep. Just run on the wall and break. It'll be great for follow-up shots. This is a trigger that I think is appropriate for both carry and will make for good target use. And that's, I think, extra value in such an affordable gun. Since this has a high chance of being someone's first pistol, this would be good to learn on. Adding to that about what makes it so good to learn on, we've got these memory points. See that indentation there? Great spot to remember to keep your finger straight until you're on target and ready to shoot. We've got one over here for lefties or for the thumb of the support hand to help control the gun a little bit better while shooting. Excellent, excellent design. All right, now back to our traditional starting up at the front. We have a little bit of a bullish cut here to help uh, make holstering easier. Slide to frame, little wiggle, nothing out of the ordinary. We have a single pick rail slot here for a light. Um, there was space for another slot, but there aren't many objects that fit in something that small, so that's nice. We've got front slide serrations for press checking from underneath or up top like this, if you want to grab that way. They are not necessarily very deep or huge, but this gun racks so easily you don't need a whole lot of pressure. I'll explain more on that once we get inside the gun. We do not have texturing on the front of the trigger guard, but it does have a bit of a hook to it for those who like to put their support hand finger on there. Not much of an undercut for the trigger guard. This is one spot that on Taurus I wish they'd just raise up a little bit because what ends up happening is it causes a little bit of rub or pressure on that middle finger there for me and my hands. That's not saying it's universal. The texturing is very nicely done. We've got this uh, laser stippling, if you will. Um, it's got good texture to be grabby, but not so much that I think it would cause you to rub your belly raw in a carry gun. So that's a, a nice blend. And it's not the whole dang thing, it's just prudent spots. Not much beveling down here for magwell. If you're concerned about that, take a look at your magazine and you'll realize that a double stack single feed magazine is its own magwell. What I do for a case like this, insert hitting against that back there, and then once you feel that, you can shove right in, and the shape, see how it's narrow up top there, and then I lose wiggle room as it gets to full length, that guides you and serves as your magwell. Texturing on the back strap as well. Here's our sight system. We have a blacked out rear sight and a single dot front. This is one of the changes I noticed between my G3 and the G3 XL is now we've got a regular dovetail sight. If you know 
what cut that is, please leave it in the comments for other people to see. I'm not sure. I'm suspecting maybe a Glock cut. Glock cut. Um, so could be good. Speaking of that overall length thing that I've pointed out from the manual is these look identical from the top. The only way I can see that there's maybe a little more length is since this G3 is sticking out longer at the bottom that maybe it's protruding past the rearmost point of the slide. Hard to tell, depends on the angle that you look at and I'm not going to play with camera angles to fool you one way or, the, or another. Just wanted to point out that it is different in that way. Right, so the gun, no controls, uh, our magazine release, as I mentioned earlier, appears to be reversible based on the magazine. And our barrel finish is that classic Taurus finish. One of the things that you give up when you have such an affordable gun is fancy finishes. So although they say this is a tenifer finish, it's got a rough feel to it, almost like a parkerization kind of thing. And I know it scratches off because, for example, my GX4 came out of the box with scratches on it. Brand new. Um, so it's going to scratch up, but just keep an eye on it. Put a little dab of oil on there to keep the rust away. and It'll be fine. Guns are tools, folks. Um, there are showy guns that are fun to show off. You don't get those for $300. Up top, we have a witness window to be able to see if there is a round in the chamber. That works so well, so long as there's plenty of light and your brass is shiny. Next, we'll field strip the G3XL and take a look inside the gun. Field stripping the G3XL is fairly simple. We're first going to check for clear. We'll see if the gun is empty. Then you're going to pull down on these takedown tabs on both sides of the gun. Bring the slide back a little bit and you'll feel the tabs come down as they'll release their pressure. Then you'll release the striker by pulling the trigger and bring the slide off of the gun. Taking a look inside our frame, we can see Standard, modern, production, very simplistic. It uh, looks like a bit of a chassis, including the fact that the serial number is on a window here, but not a chassis in the sense that you can swap out grip modules, to my knowledge. One concern I have here is the little doohickey that does the pulling on the striker it looks to be awfully thin. I think if something was going to break, that would be it. But I haven't seen or heard of them breaking, so maybe I'm wrong. Uh, the slide rails are also awfully tiny on this thing, but if that affects accuracy or not, it's something we'll find out when we get to the range. To get our slide apart, we can get to the secret of why it's so easy to rack. We're going to pull, press in and pull up to get our recoil assembly out of there. It is a dual captured recoil spring with a long healthy springs on there. The way that works is the start of the movement, what you need to get momentum going to rack the slide, is that nice larger outer spring that is not as stiff, makes it a whole lot easier to rack. And this thing is greasy, fresh from Brazil. Getting the barrel out, we're going to tap on it to unlock it, forward a little bit, and out. And now we can take a look inside our slide. And you can see it follows the same basic layout that most striker fired guns do these days. That is our safety plunger, that's what makes it drop safe. Uh, or sorry, that's the, um, effectively on the, keeps the trigger from, it won't fire unless the trigger is depressed. Sorry, so you see the, the striker cannot go forward here until there's pressure on that and then the striker can go forward. Take a look at our barrel. Got machine oil galore. I'm going to have to grab a rag real quick. Now these barrels are made of stainless steel, so the fact that the finish has already worn off just from the couple times I've racked it and dry fired it, um, although that's discouraging as far as you bought something and it's like, oh, now it's not so pretty anymore. It is stainless steel, so just keep an eye on that for uh, corrosion as time goes on. It also is nice in that it lets you know where you need to lubricate. <laughs> Anywhere that it's been rubbing off is where there's friction spots. This down here is all oil. We've got a nice long and broad feed ramp, which will lead us to our chamber support check which is done, as always, using our Nosler match ammunition. What we're looking for here, first is how is the chamber shaped, um, and is it the right size? We're going to drop a round in, nice clump, and what we're looking for is how deep does it go. And, come on camera, there we are. You can see quite a bit of brass sticking out still. I was able to tap it in a little bit. 
round stuck a little bit. I'm going to assume so everything looks fairly clean in there, at least as far as I can see, that that's just some of the oil making a seal. Man, it does not want to go all the way. And I hope this is not another short chamber issue like we experienced with the GX4. Um, we'll have to watch that on the range. Normally what we're looking for is to make sure that everything, as I grab a tool here, from this edge here out, or this edge in, is supported, but we're not getting all of that into our chamber. Uh, and where you usually lack chamber support is underneath it down here. That's where it becomes a cautionary tale if you're thinking about using reloads um, or any ammo of questionable quality because should the case rupture, it'll rupture out there, ejecting all of the force uh, down into the frame of the gun, which your hand is wrapped around. Um, yeah, this is, seems a little shallower than I'm accustomed to. Um, I'm not a gunsmith. I'm not going to claim that's wrong, but have reviewed... Wow, that round was stuck in there, too. No marks on the brass to show friction, but still maybe a little bit alarming. Um, we saw this on our GX4, and when we got it to the range, we ended up having issues with it because of that. Um, you could tell the, by the shaping of the brass that it was not um, not supporting the round as it should. Now, Taurus uh, did take that barrel back and get us a new barrel immediately. Hope that's not the case with this one. We'll have to find out when we get to the range. Reassembly is reverse of the assembly. Easy enough to do. Uh, when we do get this to the range, you'll see our cold shot, first shot impressions. We'll also get uh, full magazine plus one done with 13 rounds. The our trademark what's for dinner test to see what rounds the gun will eat and how they fire, as well as some accuracy shots, um, some sights and trigger test using the spinner target, and then concluding thoughts. Guns all back together and seems to be functioning fine. Interesting one. I really want Taurus to succeed. I've liked a lot of their designs, uh, and they incorporate a lot of otherwise advanced features into very affordable guns. Man, that uh, chamber fitment was a little bit questionable. I guess we'll see what happens when we get out to the range. Stay tuned for the shooting impressions video, and thanks for watching.